Mars.coza. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars. Hello, Jacob Mushukwa here. Welcome to another Cars.coza video. So, I find myself in Emalahleni, aka Vidbank. And the reason why I'm here is because I heard something about a very fast Amarok. And guess what? It just so happens that I'm also driving an Amarok. I'm here to meet a guy by the name of Werner. And we're about to see how Werner put it all together. How's it? Are you Werner? Fine, you must be Jacob. Uh, nice to meet you. Pleasure, Jacob. So this is the car, yeah? This is it. So I thought rather than talking numbers, let me show you the numbers, then we'll go for a drive from there. Okay, okay. So quick dyno, then we're gonna go for a drive. Let's do this. Yeah, so we just did a dyno run with the Bucky and I think the important thing to check out is who's on the top 10 list. So it's pretty weird, right? You're just seeing like uh, Audi S3, Golf Mark 1, 20 valve, BMW 330D, another Golf Mark 1, a Chevy Lumina, and then boom, there's Werner with an Amarok 330D. Well, it has it there on 285 kilowatts and 925 newton meters of torque. That is just pure madness for a Bucky this big. This is crazy. <laughs> it's so strong. <laughs> Jeez. So normally if we drag race, you launch this in second. The first gear is worthless. Oh, okay. Traction is actually the reason we put the canopy on to give it some weight at the back. Oh, so this yeah. canopy takes about four guys to pick it up. Oh, so it's a very heavy canopy. Yeah, so if you take it off, there's no traction whatsoever. Yes, then we're spinning like we're in a, a 1400 yeah. champ in then, the rain. Then the third gear is still have no traction. <laughs> now, first and second's the problem. <laughs> Oh, so everything is carefully placed on this car yeah, to so make the driving experience more yeah, bearable. Yeah. So we had our fair share of fun, but now I want to get into the nitty gritties. I want to know what's underneath the bonnet of this car. Werner, what is the Nibaki? Well, it is a 330D at the E98, so everything's M57 TU2, so full aluminium, the last, last variation of the M57s that we got in South Africa, so single turbo. Then we did a few upgrades to it. We decided to go hybrid turbo and EGR delete, and the open exhaust, front mount intake, just some supporting mods just to get it more comfortable and reliable in the buck itself. What, what, wait, what engine was in this car initially and who has the idea that, you know what, it would be a cool idea to put a 330D engine in an Amarok? Yeah, look what, where it came from actually, the Bucky started life out as a 90 kilowatt, 2 liter single turbo Amarok. Okay. Uh, with, which I drove for about a year or two. Then the problem with the 90 kilowatts is the lowest power setting one that you can get. So it's fine in town. As soon as you pull something or load something, it's not a very comfortable, very strong bucky. So the replacement was either going to be buy a V6 Amarok for 600 to a million bucks. Yeah. So I said, no, BMW is what we specialize in. So I'll do a, a swap in it. That's something that hasn't been done before very times. So. We decided to take the 90 kilowatt engine out, swap in the M57. Then we said, okay, now people are obviously going to start to reference it to a V6 Amarok, so it better be faster. At least. <laughs> oh, hence you went for the hybrid turbos. Then and the we decided, power. okay, let's let's give it some power and and so on. So we did the hybrid turbo, EGR delete, all that stuff. <laughs> went for the auto, so it, it's nicer to tow with. Still using the BMW box as well. 
were there any complications with making this all work? Look at the, the time we started when we were doing the research, everyone said, no, it's not actually that possible because I was planning on using the automatic gearbox. Okay. With the BMW ECU, I didn't want to do aftermarket ECU on it gotcha. to keep it reliable and factory smooth. Okay, and then getting the dials to work and, and everything like that, did you have to do some mods on the ECU? Or what was that? Not that much. The Amarok speeder works via wheel speed, so we just uh, tap the sensor in here for the heat gauge, crank pickup from the Amarok ECU we left in the in the bucket to, to run the gauges and all that stuff. So rev count, everything works via the, the VW ECU. The engine gearbox works from the BMW ECU. And you end up having an Amarok that's faster than a factory built V6 Amarok. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is crazy, man. This really is crazy. At a fraction of the price, that was the main main idea. So Now, now tell me something. How long did this entire uh, process take, this build? How long did it take? All of two months. Two months you did this? Two months, yeah. And it's just been an amazing time to drive this car. When you're driving it around and you're driving in town, are people like, hey, 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 you want to pass? Do you want to race? Do you want to dice? Yeah, well, it happens. You can't avoid it. It's a 90 mil straight pipe, so you hear it coming from a mile away. It looks yeah. sleeper if it's off. If yeah. it's hiding at the robot, you don't know, but as soon as you get on the gas, yeah, it opens up the throat a bit. And, and let's talk about those numbers. I mean... Uh, well, with the uh, current tune, it makes about 280 kilowatts, 900 newtons on the wheels. 280? 282 kilowatts was the last dyno. And 900 what? 925 newtons at the wheels. <laughs> Booster That's still, amazing. Booster still fairly low, it's two bar, so we're still busy with some gremlins in the software tuning, but... So it could go further with, with the Newton meters? Yeah, it will. We was planning to do a, a map sensor upgrade so it can read a bit more, maybe do a bigger turbo still and get it to maybe about two and a half, three bar boost. Let's do the supporting modes for that, but that's maybe somewhere in the future. I'm not understanding. Are you not are you not driving this car and people ask you, or when you open the bonnet and think, I say mal booty, my can me yo? Yeah, well that is a nice re nice reaction if someone in my line of work, so that's part of the reason we do it. So oh. it's not something you see every day, so it turns into a one-off. No, it is. This is definitely a one-off piece. Werner, ah, good, up, good one, man. Nice one. Nice to see something like this. This is where enthusiasts take it to the next level, right? You put a 330D engine in a VW Amarok and you will be a one-off one. So I've just spent an amazing time experiencing two different Amaroks. I mean, this goes to show how popular Bucky's have become in South Africa. Here's a cool fun fact. This Amarok is powered by a BMW engine, while the Amarok that I'm driving is powered by a Ford Ranger engine. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Drops mic. Uh, don't put that in the edit. Cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. So of course you might have seen the 4Motion stickers on the Amarok. So the car did initially come as a 4Motion Amarok. And of course when they did the conversion to the BMW engine for it to run properly with the auto gearbox, it had to be rear wheel drive. And as you can see it is rear wheel drive. But they are toying with the idea of possibly changing it in the future, getting an X5 gearbox for it to be able to be 4Motion once again. But that leaves us with this question, if the car was 4Motion, it wasn't going to be able to do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cars. 
Are you busy trying to decide between two cars, three cars, four cars, five cars, six cars? We have an excellent compare tool on our site, which will help you make sense of all the different pricing and all the different specs. You'll find it on our main site, as well as in our app. It's super slick, it's easy to use, it's highly detailed, it's constantly updated with the latest information and pricing, and I can guarantee you it'll make your life a ton easier. Check it out on our website, link in the description below. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars.